Hey, Hello. nice to meet you. Hi. Want some tea? Or you have tea? I brought my own, thank <laughs> you. Good. <laughs> so you must be very tired. Not too bad, I was in Asia anyway. So I'm not jet lagged. And how about you? Um, yeah, yeah, we start. Yeah. <laughs> we start already. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs>这个新鲜体验不是一个传统意义上的战争片它打得很好对一个很大的你是你那时候真觉得自己是飞行员但你说诺兰的非常独特的控制性吗他的控制性过强但是会导致一会有一个很好的结果但也导致了就是我们想看到的更意外的东西没有出现嘛你是特别挺诺兰的是吧肯定脑残粉吧那你比如你们分析分析就是他成为一个就是那种所谓的上神坛那样的后面那个整个的社会心理原因是什么呢
in the past, you always, you always imagine the future or you imagine the maybe mm -hmm. not very concrete things, concrete yes. situation. But now you're facing the very concrete historical place and uh, yes. event. So, I mean, the two imagination are very different for you or uh, similar? I mean, imagine the well, I, I found it um, creatively, I, th I found it invigorating because mm -hmm. the key difference is that the world of the film, which is something you're normally the world of the film is something in, in which, as a writer, I'm normally engaged in constructing from the ground up, particularly in a film like Inception, for example, or uh, Interstellar. Um, you know, the script has to create the entire world of the film and the terms of it. That part of it was already done for me in Dunkirk. That exists, it's real. And so all I had to do was research it and read about it. Mm -hmm. And so my creative process was then different. I didn't have to build that, I had to explore it. Quite honestly, the, the feeling of presumptuousness about making a war film as somebody who's never been to war yeah. and would, I mean, it's my worst nightmare to imagine mm -hmm. having to fight a war. I had the privilege and my grandfather was in the Air Force and he died in World War II and I took my children to go and visit his grave. He's buried in France. Mm -hmm. And um, when you look at the gravestones of the people who actually died in this and you think, okay, we're going to make an entertainment, we're going to make a, you know, a cinematic yeah. telling of, of war. That's very daunting and it's difficult to know how to go about that. But for me, the solution was to not look at Dunkirk as a war film, to look at it as a survival story. And that I felt confident of. I felt confident of being able to tell a suspenseful story uh, about survival. Could or should director be kind of philosopher? I mean, maybe your industry produce your own Michel Foucault, produce your own niche. Do you kind of see the parallel between them? Well, I think, I think for me, that would be too much of a, it would be too self-conscious to look yeah. at filmmaking that way. Mm -hmm. um, one of the pleasures of talking about the But film you are very self-conscious. <laughs> Well, not, <laughs> not at different stages. So you yeah. become very self-conscious when you're talking about the film you've made because yeah. you're being asked, you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, I like to really stay focused on the story and the themes of the film. I like to try and do that instinctively rather than self-consciously. Mm -hmm. And I sort of trust that mm. the way in which I know how to make a film technically yeah that if there are things that are interesting to me philosophically, that they'll sort of somehow they'll be there. So for example, with Dunkirk, we've tried to make a very intense film that, and that was really, really the ambition. And so the film's attitude to war, therefore for me, had to be not self-conscious. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to make a film that was an anti-war film or a pro-war film or anything. I wanted to make a film that present my point of view on it and enjoy that. <laughs> so from the... the, the it sounds a little self-indulgent. <laughs> <but. laughs> yeah. Do you worry about it, maybe the genre, maybe the big, big production, maybe stifling your creativity, I mean, from following insomnia, the different yeah. parts. Do you worry about it? Or I don't, I mean... I have worried about it in the past. In the case of this film, I very much chose to not worry about it. <laughs> I very much chose mm -hmm. to just say this is a huge film that for a British person particularly, mm -hmm. it's a necessary film to be made. Somebody's going to make it. I want to be the person to make it. Um, and so I'm a responsible filmmaker and I try and, you know, we made the film efficiently. We made it for a good price for the studio mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, that was our way of kind of dealing with the practicalities. But beyond mm. that, I did not worry too much about the mm -hmm. scale. I just said, you know what? We're just gonna make the film right <laughs> and we need planes and we need ships and we need thousands of people and mm. we're just gonna make this film. And uh, I think that was important to do mm -hmm. because the rational part of my brain, the sort of, you know, the businessman, if you like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, 
，嗯，他们都会越来越多吧，就是。做做刺猬越来越难了，变得在这个时代非常难了。就是再也没有一个单一命题可以让你，呃，执着执着下去了。就如果说呃，徐老师这个外表狐狸，内心刺猬的话，哈，实际上除了虚荣心之外的弱点，还有一点就是他有点贪婪，就是那么多优秀的样本，他都想成为，他既想成为本亚明，对吧？也想成为梁启超。对，所以我是个非常不成熟的人格。现在好一点了，现在我觉得我反正现在我意识到自己的能力有限了，我非常局限性，我只能成为我自己了。我现在现在开始接受这点了。以前我想成为各种人，谢谢大师他自己在不断的这个接收、抛弃，对吧？这个在升华的过程，你你你中间会希望有一天你终于不提这些人吗？为什么要不提呀、啊？就是他他们就是我的一部分，为什么要不提呢？难道每个人不是被上一代人滋养吗？被死去的人滋养才获得，才变成现在。就是六经助我嘛，就是那是一个多么瞎扯淡的事儿。康有为那样的人，他就是受到廖平的影响，廖平受到王凯韵的影响、嗯。每个人都有一套思想脉络，怎么可能假装自己是蹦出来的人呢？而且太阳底下无新鲜事，嗯、能说出多少崭新的东西吗、嗯？必须活在这些大师的阴影里。我们必须承认这种阴影，在阴影之，在阴影中创造一点，或者假装创造一些。可以超出阴影范围的东西，就像诺兰也在他的传统里面，没有那个 Kubrick， 没有这些 Scott、Scott、Ridley Scott 这些人，没有诺兰。嗯，我觉得我们做这个节目，包括做诺兰也好，我觉得我们都是在寻找某种历史意识。这些人，他不是突然发生的。可能我不喜欢这个时代的很，就是很多东西原因，就是大家误以为很多东西是崭新的。就是我可能希望自己是一个。给一个时代提供某种就就反反作用力的人，或者说相反声音的人，对嗯，对。What's the most f l o o r part of yourself? <笑> I don't want to go there. <笑> I drink too much tea. <笑> From the, the first idea of the movie until the finish of the whole whole thing, the whole process, what's the weakest part of your in the whole process? Yourself. The weakest part? Weakest, yeah. Gosh,、um, that's a difficult thing to answer because、mm. the way the job of director works is you don't. What I like about it is you're not responsible for any one thing,、mm -hmm. and so your responsibilities are spread. You you get to dabble, you do a bit of everything, and so. For me, it's not really about weaknesses and strengths. It's about an overall, <laughs> I suppose, an overall mediocrity. <laughs> it's like I sort of I have to be pretty good and kind of know quite a bit about a lot of different things,、mm. and so that's kind of fun. You don't have to be. You you have experts around、mm. you. I have a, you know, fantastic director of photography. I have a、mm. fantastic designer. I have a fantastic editor and so on. And so I'm really just there to sort of. You know, try and give them focus, or try and inspire them to do their best work.、Um, and I think that's one of the reasons I really like the job of director. And so, you don't really—I'm not the member of the team who has to have a specific strength, a specific weakness. I sort of need to be pretty good at a bunch of different things and kind of just keep. It must be Fox.、Mm. Is there some some kind of limitation you you hate it? You want to overcome it? I, you know, you feel very much when you're writing. You feel the limitations of your ability. Writing, I think, more than any other aspect of filmmaking, is the one where you have a notion,、mm. you have an idea underlying, and then you're confronted with the absolute difficulty of executing that. It's very, very tough. Are there some writers inspire you a lot? I always. Drawn to、um, the writer, I always point to is is Borges, the Argentinian writer. Ah, Borges,、ah, my、yeah. favorite. Oh, really? Yeah. Also about kind of Inception. <laughs> <laughs> Very much. <laughs> yeah. I'll return to a movie director. You are inspired by Ridley Scott and、yeah. uh, this compare you today's achievement with him. So, how do you think about your innovation with them? With、oh, him? How am I、yeah. doing? Ridley Scott. I, I mean. <laughs> Jeez, not for me to say.、Um, mm. I think that、uh, 
interestingly, um, the thing about Ridley Scott for me that, that captured my imagination as a teenager and has always stuck with me is his incredible ability to create worlds, his fascination with the visual side of filmmaking and, and ability to, to do that. And so I, when I started making my films, I, I think I pushed in a very different direction. And so my films have been more about narrative, I think, more mm. about writing in a way. Uh, and it's almost that thing of the people you admire so much, you, you sort of need to, to do something you know, different in a, in a different way. Yeah, and today you are, you are viewed as the representative for today's Hollywood. And uh, how, do you th how do you think about the tradition of Hollywood? I mean, from the John Ford, from the Coppola until James Cameron, until you. I mean, you, you're part of tradition, or how do you define the tradition? And do you do some, contribute something different in the tradition? Well, I think um, it comes back to everybody here wanting me to talk about <laughs> Sorry. judge myself. <laughs> well, no, it's very tough. Uh, um. uh, what I feel a responsibility to do, what I'm trying to do, yeah. is add something to that uh. development or that evolution. But uh. I would be lying if I said I knew what it was that I could or had done. Mm. Um, I've been very gratified by some of the responses to Dunkirk where people have felt that it is different or that it adds something a little bit different to, mm. um, you know, what you know a summer blockbuster from a Hollywood studio can be, you know, whatever. Mm. The thing I've tried to do <clears throat> was I played a very big part in, uh, you know, the growth of uh, or the dominance, I would say, of superhero films, yeah. of, you know, franchise properties and, and everything, and and you know that was an incredibly important thing in in my career. I've always tried to balance that side of my filmmaking with original films and, and bring things that aren't familiar to an audience. Yeah. Uh, but it's difficult. I mean, in television, everyone always talks about how great <laughs> TV is today and how amazing it is and how much better it is. Yeah. And I think films, we, we have the opposite. You, you look at it and you say, well, if, if this film doesn't have some unique point of view to it, if it doesn't have a strong point of view, it's not going to be interesting to people yeah. of today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if you were in Dunkirk, what kind of role you will be played? You would be desperate or you would be hopeful or brave or cowed? I think what the film tries to say very strongly is we cannot know until we <laughs> are faced with the situation. We like to think that we would behave in a noble way. I wanted to be more, more real than that. You know, human beings were, were very flawed. Yeah, creatures. Okay, thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you. Running out. Thank you. Yeah, next time we can talk about Borges. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm. Well known in yeah, quite popular oh. in the among writers and the thinkers. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. But good trip. Thank you very much. Yeah. Nice Take care. Feel like just started the interview. 他是个超超级自我分析的人，还说我们问他都自我分析，他自他自己就是自我分析的人。他是啊，当然了，这因果训练最重要的就是自我分析啊。了解之后，你对他的评价比之前会高一点呢，还是说是接受存在即是合理的事实？你比我就稍微更理解一点，他们在他们做出判断的时候没那么粗暴了。每个人每个行业里面都有他内在的脉络，我们很多外外边的人看不到他内在的脉络是什么，所以这过程中帮我更理解了一些内在的脉络，其实也是帮我更理解这个社会的构成嘛。看，一直在做技术，是现在诺兰的。他不是思想家呀，你不要把，就是我们不能把诺兰当成一个思想家来看待，因为这个时代可能不产生不产生那样的人。
。就时代的创造力是是是变化的，有的时代时代是通过一种连续性，刚才不说了，那个 hedgehog hedgehog 那个刺猬是那种 consistent， 那种连续性、一贯性，然后一种。甚至一种强大的单一性带来一种力量。这个时代创造力可能是通过通过这种不连续性、不断的更新性、不断的这种就探求不同的这种领域、不同的角色扮演性来完成创造力的。所以创造的这个模式不一样。他的访谈最直接的感受，我想是不是我们对更具体的知识的无知和不了解和缺乏兴趣？使我们产生了对单一解释的一种巨大的迷恋，这背后是我们非常深沉、非常强烈的知识上的懒惰。就像我们像老追求那个刺猬一样，这是我们思维的某种特性吧？我不能说完全是缺陷，是某种特性。我们老认为存在着某种单一本质，可以解释很多东西。然后我们也希望某一个人成为那种单一本质的代表，这是我们思维上的困境，这是我们非常不糊利式的思维的。困境，我觉得我们社会很多人，包括我自己，可能我们都是非常失败的思维。我们被这种单一性所控制。我我希望我有时候想警惕这种东西，包括每集我们最后要老要追问一个东西，我不知道有时候我就怀疑这种追问吧。要对我来说，我觉得可能第二集真的不不不,不用的，就是他如果云淡风轻就云淡风轻的，也不对。哎，我想想啊。You said you don't use email and no phone. How to connect with the fast-changing modern world? I think a lot of what people do with technology is very trivial, actually, and very, you know, it's just filling time. Uh, I value, I value the discipline of of just doing nothing, yeah, and thinking, and、mm. just trying to puzzle out、mm. what it is you're working on.